Apple and Google suspend manual voice reviews. Samsung suspends the headphone jack on Galaxy Note 10. Hit subscribe and spinning back fist at bell gizmo so you don't miss the next video. I'm Rene Ritchie and this is Vector. Thing one. Last week, The Guardian reported on Apple using human contractors to help review Siri recordings for false activations and spurious responses, and generally grade its accuracy across languages and dialects. It had been reported on before, but The Guardian put the sex, the crime, the business, the medical, all of the more visceral and concerning contents of the otherwise anonymized recordings right in the subheading and the lead. And right after Apple plastered privacy gloating billboards up in Las Vegas, Toronto, and Hamburg. So this time, the story just blew up. In response, early this morning, Apple told me they're taking a few steps to address all of our collective concerns. We are committed to delivering a great Siri experience while protecting user privacy. While we conduct a thorough review, we are suspending Siri grading globally. Additionally, as part of a future software update, users will have the ability to choose to participate in grading. Although Apple didn't comment further, it seems incredibly likely that once the new software update rolls out and we can opt in or opt out, the gradings will resume. Google, who we'll get to more in a hot bot minute, seems to believe that human reviews are quote unquote critical to the product in order to make voice recognition systems more inclusive of different accents and dialects across languages. But like we talked about in the previous video, I'm still hopeful better machine learning can at least minimize the human requirement. Second, that as part of their review, Apple chooses to eliminate the contractors and bring all grading in-house so we can all benefit from the greater levels of privacy and accountability that would enforce. Third, like Dieter Bone wrote this morning, that even though Apple collects only a tiny fraction of the data of a Google or a Facebook, they follow those companies' leads and make that data they do collect much, much easier to see and delete on device and online. Because when you set the bar high, you should be clearing it even higher. Following a similar Google-focused news report earlier this month from VRT and WS, Google had shut down manual voice review in Europe. Now, following an order from German regulators under Europe's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, Google is suspending it worldwide as well. It's possible, even likely, the same orders will be sent to Apple, Amazon, anyone running a voice assistant. And according to TechCrunch, it's far from clear whether human review of audio recordings captured by any of the myriad always on voice AI products and services now on the market will be able to be compatible with Europeans' fundamental privacy rights. I haven't been able to find anything current on Amazon and Alexa, but I'll keep looking. Meantime, let me know what you think. Should human review be turned off and kept off, or do you want real people helping digital assistants deliver real better answers? Any and all opinions, drop them in the comments. Thing two. Do you want to know what else it comes with? An audio jack. I'm just saying. Despite making all kinds of fun of Apple when they deleted the headphone jack on the iPhone 7, Samsung has already kicked the 3.5 millimeter to the curb on the Galaxy Fold. And now rumor has it they'll be killing it off on the Galaxy Note 10 as well. At least that's been the rumor for a while, but now we have a dongle. Okay, technically adapter, but dongle, while less accurate because it used to refer to hardware copy protectors is just way more fun to say. Obviously, Samsung isn't the first company to ditch the jack for the dongle. HTC has been doing it off and on for over a decade, and the dongles they made for Windows mobile phones back in the day, even the very first Android devices, make modern adapters look positively elegant by comparison. Palm and BlackBerry went through their awkward 2.5 millimeter phase where you needed adapters to use your 3.5 millimeter headphones, much like older and even current high-ender headphones have 6.3 millimeter. Yep, the old quarter inch adapters. 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks really came into vogue with the iPod and the mainstreaming of digital music. And then of course, the iPhone. The original of which had a jack so hipster skinny, you needed an adapter for pretty much any headphones other than Apple's anyway. How Samsung will explain removing the jack after pushing back against it so hard for so long will be interesting to see. When Apple is late to a party, like with bigger screens and OLED displays, they just say the previous versions pretty much sucked and they were waiting until they could do it right. The previous way some other companies were deleting headphone jacks just sucked. Samsung is doing it the right and proper way, 
may be harder to sell, though we'll have to wait until next week to see how or even if they make their case. Personally, I don't miss the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack at all. I'm all in on AirPods and Bluetooth and I'm not a huge music listener anyway. I'm that animal who's been listening to podcasts using the on-device speaker for over a decade. But I also recognize my opinion isn't everyone's opinion. And as headphone jacks go away, or at least as our ability to assume they'll be there one generation, hell, one phone to the next goes away, Way, it gets harder and harder to plan our next purchases. Like, what does this even mean on the Pixel 4 diagram Google Preview leaked earlier this week? An actual 3.5 millimeter or just a really weird way to label the speaker and mic array? I still don't know. I haven't got a clue. We're all effectively caught in Schrodinger's headphone jack right now. The good bad news is that it's probably going to go away everywhere eventually, and at least we'll have that to count on. It's a unitasker in an increasingly multitasker world. It's long and it takes up a lot of space in increasingly crammed devices. And while you can get water resistance with it, it's still risky if you plug into it while it's wet. People, especially people who have low or no vision, need the ability to listen to audio while charging. So for accessibility alone, every company should be including a breakout adapter in the box or as a low cost, easily available option. Beyond that, I think we really have to start preparing ourselves for the stupid user hostile future where headphone jacks are as rare on phones as hardware keyboards. We'll get a single port and then eventually Ghosts of Jedi Master's past help us, no ports at all. And if that fills you with headphone ripping levels of rage or wireless wonder, jump into the comments and let me know. And if, like me, there's just way too much math involved, check out Brilliant. It's a problem solving website and app with a hands-on approach that offers over 50 interactive courses. The latest is Differential Equations 2. It explores real world applications involving advanced differential equations. When the parameter of the Lorentz systems are chosen just right, all solutions are attracted towards a very strange looking set that's neither an equilibrium nor a cycle, which, which kind of sounds like Apple News coverage, doesn't it? Effective learning is about problem solving and Brilliant will help you learn and get practice. You'll come away better at solving problems. To support Vector and get unlimited access to Brilliant's courses and daily challenges, head on over to brilliant.org slash vector and get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. And that's a wrap. Of course, I'd love to hear what you think about any and all of these stories, but more importantly, I'd really like to know what you want me to cover next. So hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.